What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Harley and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to swing trade and day trade options. So let's get right into it. So we're going to start with first what is an option and how do they work? Secondly talk about the risks associated with them and then we're going to get into swing trading and day trading and I'm actually going to make a trade in this video so you can watch me step by step actually go through the entire process. Now, if you're interested in learning more about options and how they work, I'm only going to cover one strategy in this video, but there's a whole lot more to dive into. And so you can learn more on Skillshare. I offer a course on there. It has 24 lessons in it. It's only two hours and 40 minutes long, and you can sign up and take the entire course completely for free. When you sign up for a free trial with Skillshare, it lasts for two weeks and you can cancel at any time. After that, it's about $12 per month. I have a link down in the description of this video to sign up for it, and it will give you so much more information than you'll ever find trying to scroll through different videos on YouTube. It will actually be well organized and walk you through step by step every different strategy you may want to know about. Now before we get actually into the trades, let's go through this quick disclaimer. These options are riskier than stocks. They're more complicated than stocks in this video is for entertainment purposes only. This is all just my opinion based off my trading experience. Now what is an option? Let's just cover that real simple. The ability to purchase a specific stock at a specific price on a specific date. An option is a financial instrument that can be traded just like a stock, just like a bond or a preferred share. There is a market for it, you can buy and sell it, and it is a financial instrument that is just the same as any other. Now, to talk about options, we have a little bit of terminology. That specific price that I referred to is also called the strike price. That is the price at which you are gonna buy the stock in the future. Now, that future date is referred to as your expiration date. That is when your option will expire and it will no longer have any value after that date. Now the price that you actually pay for that option, that initial investment to actually acquire that option is referred to as the premium. That is your upfront investment and that is how much you're paying to actually get that option to buy that specific stock at a specific price on a specific date. Now when it comes to options, there's two major types that you wanna know about. There's put options and there is call options. Call options are how you make money when the stock goes up and put options are making money when the stock goes down. It's the exact same as shorting the stock but using options to do it. Now in this video, we are gonna focus on call options. So we are gonna focus on trying to make money when the stock goes up. And so in this example here, we are looking at Apple stock that on October 21st today, when I'm making this video, is currently trading at $100. And so for our example, you are going to buy a call option with a strike price of $110 and an expiration of November 20th. And you are gonna pay $1 per share. So. Let's look at this real quick. The stock that we are trading here is Apple. That is the company that we are looking at. The strike price that we have set here is $110 and the expiration date is November 20th and our premium is $1 per share. Now, the big thing we need to talk about and the number one thing that is most likely to mess up new traders is what we call contracts. Now, this is not a written document that you need to sign or anything like that. A contract is a term that we use to represent 100 shares or 100 options. And options are only sold in the form of contracts and contracts are always representative of 100 shares or 100 options. It's kind of like buying your eggs in a carton. They only come in groups of 12. Well, when you buy options, they only come in contracts and those groups are in 100. So in our example, we are paying a $1 premium for Apple options. Unfortunately, the minimum number of contracts that we can buy is one. You cannot buy half a contract or a quarter of a contract. You have to buy one full contract. And so that means that our initial investment into this actual trade here is going going to be $1 for the premium times 100 units, which equals $100. And so to buy one contract for the Apple options, like what we're looking at in this example, is going to cost us $100. If we wanted to buy two contracts, it would cost us $200. And those are the increments that we would actually be able to buy these options in. You cannot buy 1.5 contracts. You can only buy one contract or two contract or three contracts. So sometimes it can limit the actual dollar amount that you actually wanna put into the trade. And you also have to factor in your commissions. Now let's look at a couple examples. So let's say the price stays at $100 on November 20th. So we've gone now one month, October 21st to November 20th, and the price has not changed. It has not gone up, it has not done anything, and you have now bought one contract for 100 shares or spent $100 on it, and now you have the ability to purchase Apple at $110 on today. So that, that day has come, and now you have the choice. 
It's currently trading at $100 and you have the ability to buy it at 110. Well, nobody is going to buy that. Nobody is going to execute that contract because the shares are only worth 100. So why would you ever pay 110 for it? And so what that means is that unfortunately, your contract or your premium is now worthless. Your options have expired, you have lost your entire initial investment, and your premium is now worth a big goose egg, it is worth absolutely zero, and your initial investment has gone to zero. And so basically what happens here, is you said, I think the price is gonna be higher than $110 on November 20th, and if it was, you'd make some money on it. But if it's not, you lose your entire initial investment there. So that $100 you put in is now worth absolutely zero and you've lost everything. Now, if you saw this coming and you saw, okay, I don't think Apple's actually gonna make it to 110 by November 20th, well, you could have sold your options prior to the expiration. You are not locked in to any specific date here. It is like a stock you can buy and sell it based on the liquidity in the market. Now, if you're trading something that nobody else wants to buy or nobody else wants to sell, it can be a little bit more difficult. But if you're trading a big name like Apple and you see, okay, maybe it's not gonna hit $110 by November 20th, you can get out of that no problem and maybe you take a little bit of a loss on it, but you don't lose the entire $100 that you initially invested. Now let's say the stock goes the other way. It goes up to $150 by November 20th and you wanna exercise your option. Well, it's really simple. Here are the steps you would go through. So, so you go to the market and you say you wanna exercise your option to purchase Apple at $110. Now you have to have the cash in hand to actually be to execute that and remember you bought a contract so you actually have to be able to buy $110 for the share but you have to be able to buy 100 of them to fill that entire contract so if you don't have that money you need to have sold this option prior to the expiration and yes it will be worth nearly as much as if you had actually converted the options so if you decide to exercise your option you would purchase the shares at $110 you now own 100 shares of Apple at an average cost of $110 but you also paid a $1 premium on them so really your average cost is $111 and that is your break even level is the premium plus the strike price that's how you find the break even in your actual options so now on November 20th the Apple shares are actually selling at $150 and so what happens is you went into the market and bought in at 110 you instantly turned around and you flipped them and you sold them at $150 and you made that $39 profit you lost $1 because you paid that premium up front and so that's where the $39 comes from now the cool thing here though is that your initial investment was only one dollar yes you had to have some funds available to actually buy the shares and then sell them back in the market however that money was never actually at risk the only money that was ever at risk was your initial one dollar per share or hundred dollar investment however that has now generated you a profit of 39 dollars per share and therefore the risk to return ratio on options is much different than it is on stocks and that's why some people trade options instead all right, so a couple of things you need to know about options is that they do trade just like stocks. When a buyer has a price he wants to buy at and a seller has a price he wants to sell at, when those two levels meet, that's when the transactions happen. Now, options do have usually less liquidity than stocks, so you do need to be aware of that. And they can be sold before expiration. So in our situation, the no expiration was on November 20th. You could have sold it on 19th, 18th, 17th of November, whatever day you wanted to, and you could have got market price. That market price is usually representative of the same level of profit had you converted and exercised that option. The big thing here though is that options are much more volatile than stocks and they're only ever sold in contracts that represent 100 shares and so you need to be very careful here because if you plan to exercise your option you need to be able to cover 100 shares worth of every contract that you own and sometimes that can be a lot of money especially if you're playing with stocks that are 100, 200, 300 dollars each. That can be a lot of money that you're going to need in order to just exercise that option and therefore I recommend buying and selling these options prior to expiration because you will never have to worry about that's what I personally do I never actually hold my options all the way to expiration now I want to emphasize this again options are much riskier than stocks and they're much more volatile than stocks you really need to know what you are doing before you start playing with your real money and therefore I highly highly recommend using a practice account to just understand and play with options before you actually ever make a trade the big thing here is small position sizing as well because they are so volatile because the risk is high you never want to have a big position of your portfolio in any type of volatile options you want to be very safe and very careful with these there are 
a lot of horror stories of people that have made trades that were too big for their portfolio or they lost a lot of money or they had hit the wrong button and something bad happens trading options. It happens a lot. It is not uncommon and you need to be extremely, extremely careful when you're trading options because there are a lot of horror stories out there of people that have lost a lot of money and done a lot of silly things trading options. Okay, so now we're gonna get into swing trading and I'm actually gonna make a trade in this video. If you're interested in my broker at all, I use Quest Trade. I highly recommend them. I think they do a great job and if you're interested in signing up with them, there is a link below that will give you $50 in free trading commissions. So you can make your first five or 10 trades without paying any fees at all. I highly recommend them. They do a great job. All right, you guys, so I am in Quest Trade now and the company we are looking at today is Switchback Energy Acquisition Corp. Now this company has just purchased and basically merged with ChargePoint Energy. Now ChargePoint is the largest electric vehicle charging hardware company in the United States. If you own a building and you wanna put in electric vehicle chargers at your location, you call up ChargePoint, they come in, they set up the station for you, they charge you a little bit of a software fee, they also sell you the electricity, the whole nine yards, and this company is doing phenomenally well. They have about seven times as many units installed and operating as the next closest competitor. I think they're an industry leader, and I think they're gonna do extremely well over the last little while. I also like the price action lately. And so instead of swing trading these guys using stocks, I'm gonna swing trade them using options. And so here's my technical analysis and here's what I'm looking at. So when we draw a trend line here, I think there's a very clear trend line happening. I also think we're seeing a little bit of a double top and a breakout. So I think we saw a high set at the end of September here. We came back down to around 1350 where we had previous support that was set from the previous highs. And now we have bounced up. We have hit a all time high today of $17.60. The market said no, not quite that high. Knocked us down a little bit of a level, but I think we're gonna see this trend line continue over time and that means in the next month or two, I think the price is gonna go up and instead of buying the stock, I actually wanna buy the option so that I can capitalize on this as much as possible. So this is what the chart looks like on a basically three to four month time frame. We are going to swing trade it using options. So what I'm going to do is go into the top left corner here and instead of clicking on the stock button, I'm going to click on it. It gives me a little drop down menu and I'm gonna click on options. Now, our, car, our chart just completely changed here, and at the top, we have a couple more options here. So, as you can see right here, November 20th, this is the expiration date. If you drop this down, we have a couple of different options. I'm gonna leave it on November 20th right now. That's the expiration date. This one here, this 1750, is the strike price. This is the price at which we can get into Switchback Energy and actually get into the company on expiration date. And so right now it's at 1750. I'm going to leave that there as well. Now right here you can see it says call, and if you drop down it says put. So when we see call or put, this is your ability to choose: do you want to make money when the stock goes up, or do you want to make money when the stock goes down? Are you going to go long or short on the stock? How are you going to handle your position? For us, we covered the long position, the call position in our PowerPoint right there. The short position or the put position is the exact opposite. So it's the exact opposite trade, all the numbers completely in reverse. If you buy it with a, if it's currently at $100 and you buy it with a strike price at 80 and it drops down to 50, you'll make that $30 gap. That's how a put option works. For us, we are going to stick to call options because I do think this company is going to go up over time. So when we look at the price action, you can see that options only actually started trading just a little while ago. So this was October 7th, 8th, 9th. So options have only been around for about two weeks for this company. And if we looked at today, the November 20th call options with a strike price of 1750 have moved extremely drastically. So they moved from $1.34 all the way up to $2.25. So this basically option almost moved by about 80 or 90% here, like an absolute drastic move that you would never see at all in the stock price. And so that is why I am telling you that these are much more volatile, they're much more risky, and you need to be very careful about what you do and you need to be very well educated, which is why you need to sign up for my Skillshare course down below as well. Anyways, I like this company and I'm gonna make a trade on this. So as of right now, if I want to get into this position and I bought in at market price, it's currently trading at $1.35, which means $1.35 per share. So if I want to get in, I have to buy one contract worth 100 shares, which means my initial investment is $135 USD 
plus commission. Now, let's say I didn't want my options to expire in November. I wanted to give myself a little bit extra time. Let's say I wanted to go all the way out to December. Let's see what that looks like. So if I just click on December 18th, which again is the third Friday in December, you can see what these actual prices look like. Now, they've only traded for about four days here. And as you can see today, they're currently trading at $2.05. Okay, now let's calculate the break even on this specific example. So right now the strike price is set at $17.50 and the options are selling for $2.05. So for us, the break even on this is the premium plus the strike price. That is when we will actually start to make money on this option. So in this example, it's $2.05 plus $17.50 gives us a total of $19.55. So if the stock starts to trade above $19.55, before December 18th, we will be in the money. Now, if the stock starts to trade really close to that right away, let's say, let's say next week, then the option will be worth a whole lot more than we bought it for today because it will be more likely to be in the money come December 18th. Okay, you guys, so I have found my swing trade that I'm going to go into for today. It is the November 20th call option. It has a strike price of $17.50. And the premium right now, the last transaction was at $1.31. The current ask is $1.30 and the bid is $1.25. So the spread is not very drastic here. The spread is only about five cents right now. So I can get in at a market order, no problem here, not a big risk at all. If this spread was any larger than let's say 10 or 20 cents, I would put a limit on it. So you really need to be careful with your orders here because if this spread is really large, you can get definitely get in at a price you weren't expecting. So definitely look for that. I'm only gonna buy one contract. Remember, this is a contract. So this actually represents 100 shares. I'm going to buy it at the market. It's gonna be good for the day, but it's gonna execute right away because it is a market order. And I am going to pay $1.31 USD in premium. And then I'm gonna pay a commission on the trade. So at $17.50 plus $1.31 premium, my break even even on this trade is going to be $18.81. I guess depending on where this actually executes, it'll probably be $1.30. So it'll be $18.80 will be my break even on this trade. So if the stock gets above that before November 20th, we're going to be doing extremely well. If it dips again for the next couple of days, I'll probably take a pretty big hit on this specific trade. But if it goes well, we'll do extremely well on it as well. So I'm going to execute this trade right now. We are just going to click on buy. So this is the summary right here. It's gonna cost me $130 US plus $5.70 in commissions. And when I click on send order, it will actually execute the trade. So there's the buy to open. And I just got the alert from Quest Trade. I don't know if you can see that. From Quest Trade at the top there. So the order is placed. I am in this stock. And now this little green arrow has appeared, which says, hey, Zach, you, uh, you bought on this day. So hopefully the next candle is a green one and we should do pretty well on that. So that is how you swing trade options. You basically buy in for an expiry one, two, three months out, depending on when you think it will actually realize the gains you are waiting for. And then you kind of wait it out and you see what happens. Now, there will be drastic fluctuations overnight in the value of your stock price. These values are usually gapping up or gapping down. They're usually not very well connected, especially when you're trading options. So you need to be very well aware of that. You need to be very well of the risks. Now let's start talking about day trading options. This is an entirely different ball game because liquidity becomes a major challenge here. When you are trying to buy and sell in and out of options extremely quickly, you need to have very close spreads and you need to be able to get in and get out of that stock quickly, which means there needs to be a lot of other people also trading it. And unfortunately, we just don't have that amount of liquidity in a lot of different different stocks. And so, so when we are day trading options, we are usually day trading the big plays. We are usually day trading ETFs and we are usually day trading very large companies that have enough people that are trading options to actually give us the liquidity that we need to get in and out quickly at close enough spreads. And so let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. So I'm just pulling up Apple right now. So this is their stock chart on the one minute. Now, as you can see, they're moving, let's say 700,000 shares per day. If you go to Facebook, it is still a large company, it is a major player, but they're not moving anywhere near this. So instead of 700,000 shares per minute, they're moving like 80,000 shares per minute. So they're moving one eighth as many shares as Apple is. Now, obviously these numbers depend on what day and earnings and things like that, but the volume is super important here. And so when we go to the options, it becomes even more important. And so what I mean by that is when you look at these Facebook options here, you can see these major gaps up and these gaps up and gaps down are caused by nobody actually trading within those areas.
And then you see these major spikes here in volume and that's because one guy steps in with one big order. And so when we compare this Facebook chart, let's look at the Apple options, you can see that there is a drastic improvement. There is actually continuous movement here between the candlesticks, even on a one minute pattern, there's just much more volume on Apple than there is on Facebook. And because of that reason, it gives us much smaller spreads. It gives us much better liquidity and we're able to get in and out of the stocks much faster. So anytime you're going to day trade, options you need to make sure that whatever you are going to day trade has enough liquidity to actually be able to connect some of these candlesticks and actually look at the charts now the really unique thing about day trading options is that the day trading charts look almost identical to the stock charts on a daily one minute and five minute time frame let me show you exactly what i mean by that so on the left here you can see the apple chart this is the apple stock over the course of today I'll go to market open there. So that is market open right there. That is the movement of the Apple option throughout today. So the 23rd of October, $117 call option. This is what the chart looked like the entire day through. Now, as you can see, it moved from $1.42 all the way up to $3.50. So it had a 100% move on the day. This moved absolutely drastically from $1.42 all the way up to $3.05 and now down to $1.96. Now, the interesting thing here is when I pull up the Apple stock chart, on the exact same time frame, it is gonna show the exact same pattern with not nearly as much volatility. Let me do that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on the window, I'm gonna click on duplicate window. Now it has given me the complete identical chart, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change it from option, I'm going to change it to stock. And so when we I expand this out to the exact same time frame, you can see that these charts look almost identical. So it started here, it dipped below the open, it came back up above, it dipped below again, came back up above with a nice little run, and then right here at around 11 o'clock, it had a nice really big low. If you look at the stock chart here on the right side, right around 11 o'clock, it had a nice big low again. If you look at the high of day, it occurred right around at 137 here, and if you look at the high of the day on the options chart, it also occurred right around 137. So what I'm trying to show you here is that on a daily time frame, whether it's one minute, five minute, 10 minute, the options chart will move the exact same way that the stock chart does. Therefore, if you can day trade the stock chart and be profitable, you can day trade the options chart and drastically, drastically increase the return on your trades. Because if you made the exact same trade here where you bought it at the low and sold it at the high, you would have made about $2.50 maybe a 2% increase in your actual trade here. But if you had done it on the options chart here and you had bought at the low and you'd sold at the high, you would have doubled your money. And that is the difference here between options and stocks is the volatility and the risk return. But what I'm trying to show you here is all of the same strategies that you use for technical analysis on your stocks can be applied to the exact same thing on the options as long as you're on a daily time frame. Now, in order to day trade the options, what you would do is do all of your technical analysis on the actual stock chart, but you would day trade on the actual options chart. So when I look at this and I see, okay, very clearly here, we had a very clear breakout of the previous highs. If you had bought in here and then you sold out at this double top that was formed right here, you would have had an excellent return. If you just take this exact same technical analysis and you move it over to the options chart and then you make your trades on the options chart, you will get the exact same trades, but you will get much more drastic and improved returns. The reason you want to do your technical analysis on the stock chart though, is because this is where the price support and resistance levels are. When you see support and resistance levels in the actual options chart, it is not real. It does not mean anything. And that is why they usually don't line up. However, when you see support and resistance in the actual stock chart, that is your indication. And that is why you do the technical analysis on the stock chart, but you make your trades in the options. So in summary for the entire video, options are much riskier. They are much more volatile and you need to know what you're doing. If you want to learn more than what you learned in this video, check out the links down below in the description. They will give you a free course on how to trade options. If you are going to swing trade options, you want to treat it the exact same way you would if you were going to buy the stock, but instead you buy the options for usually one or two months after you think you're about to hit your price target. So that way you have some room to go in case you're wrong or it takes longer than you expect. If you are going to day trade, you need to have the option
option chart open and you need to have the stock chart open. They need to be on the same daily time frame, either a one minute or a five minute chart. You perform all of your technical analysis on the actual stock chart, but you make all of your trades on the actual options chart. And that way you will be able to maximize your return. If you guys got any value out of this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.